Welcome to The Business on Radio Verulam, the voice of your local business community. Hello, it's Sunday, it's 8pm, and yes, welcome to The Business. I'm Victoria Scott, with a show that's essential listening for the West Hearts business community. I'm here with Claire McNulty, and we have a very special show this evening, focused on just about everything you need to know about entering business awards. The why, the what, the how, and things that all SMEs should be aware of, um, with insight from Sarah Scott, absolutely no relation to me, who's the manager of events at Archant Hertfordshire Business Awards. We've got tips from Isabel Moritz of Bid Perfect, a company that helps others with their entries. We've got a view from Judge Paul Beasley, who's the MD of Richmond House Financial Services Group. And we've got lots of hints and tips on entries and interviews with winners, runners-up and other interested parties. But first of all, what's in the business news? So Claire, what caught your eye in the business news this week? I noticed the report and I hope I'm going to get the name of this report right because it's quite um, quite difficult to say. It's the UK Customer Satisfaction Score 2013. Um, it covers many areas, but one that did make me smile was that one of the key findings was that the value of a smile is unmatched and that good customer service and being greeted by a smile increased the average spend by 40%. Crikey, that's a, that's a lot of extra spend, isn't it? A lot it? of extra spend. And the report covers, it's, it's a very far-reaching report, covers many areas, but it concludes that staff assistance has the biggest impact on customer satisfaction and that in turn leads to sales. And this is something that we've, we've known. It's, um, everybody knows this. It makes common sense. But the, these are just hard figures. And that's an incredible amount, 40%. It is. It's a sort of figure that you, you sort of always know when you're in John Lewis, for example, where they're always smiling and they're always helpful and they always seem to ride the storm quite well, don't they? So it doesn't surprise me, but it's, it is nice to have it uh, you know, quantified. Mm down in black and white. And just another of the findings, which which is a, a growing trend that we'll probably be, be talking about in future programmes, is what's called pre-shopping, which is where shoppers actually do a lot of looking on the internet before they come into a shop. So they're actually very, very genned up before they come in to buy items. And they're now seeing that about 50% of shoppers under the age of 18 do this pre-shopping before they come into shops and it is a growing trend so so simply that um, the companies and, and retail outlets should be aware of this. That's interesting as well isn't it because it does really mean that the staff have got to know their products they can't pull the wool over a customer's eyes and um, they've also all got to understand what the competitors are doing in terms of pricing and all mm-hmm. of those sorts of things so so retail suddenly got a little bit more difficult um, mm. but without a doubt even if you don't know as much as you should if you smile then you <laughs> you're you're laughing quite a good thing in, in more ways than one. Yeah. Um, well, uh, just on a really, really sort of light-hearted note, the bit that caught my eye this um, uh, this week was um, the diversity of the business that we've got in uh, in and around West Hearts. Um, and I was looking at um, at Hearts Life actually, and noticed that there's a Stevenage-based engineering firm that's creating harpoons to clear rubbish (laughs) from space. Now, I'm not talking about the space under the stairs here, although obviously mine could do with a bit of a clear out. But, I mean, this is deep, dark space. This is Doctor Who space. (laughs) Can you imagine that we've got a company that have um, created harpoons to do this? And it's just on our doorstep. It's fantastic. Mm. This is a company called Astrium. and The management team have recently been presenting their device to the European Space Agency conference in Germany. So really interesting stuff. Um, what, However, we want uh, to hear from you. We want to hear about your business, your business experiences, and in particular, if your business is doing something interesting in the West Hearts business community. So if you have got anything going on, please get in touch with us. Studio number 01727 Twitter us on at RV the business or email the business at radioverulam.com. You're listening to The Business on Radio Verulam. We're the voice of the local business community on 92.6 FM and on radioverulam.com. Back in May, Vicky and I were invited by the Archant Media Group to the launch of the Hertfordshire Business Awards. We met up with a whole range of people and businesses. We started off by Vicky asking a past winner, Helen Meisner of Folkstock, to tell us about her past win and what she was doing this year. In 1991, I won Hertfordshire Businesswoman of the Year. You don't look old enough. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, 
And that was a huge boost to my business when I was 21. I was doing in-house training, which I'm still doing, in businesses and sales, interviewing how to get the most out of your staff, whether it's customer care, internal management, supervisory skills. And I loved doing that. And I'm still doing that. But recently, I have been helping my daughter's band. They are an acoustic folk act, but they do pop folk. So it made me realise there's a lot of different genre strands within folk. What I decided to do was to set up a formalised structure. So I set up a community interest company, one of the new structures, and I've called it Folkstock Arts Foundation. And that's, I've got a .com at the end of that for a website. And Folkstock Arts Foundation's objective is to bring musicians forward who are playing in their bedrooms, playing in the odd club but not really getting anywhere, help them market themselves better, provide masterclasses with award-winning musicians and songwriters, which is happening now, to help them on their way, give them marketing in their local geographical area with newspapers and radio, that's already starting. And the flagship event for that is Folkstock Festival, 21st of September, Oldham Country Park. And are you here to get an award for the social enterprise set-up that is Folkstock, or are you here just talking to people like me, hoping to get a bit more of us all interested in Folkstock? I well, would love to do resist. both. No, I'd love to do both. Um, I would love to enter the awards and to win an award for the festival or the foundation. It's been a really exciting period of time for me because I've got Dave Swarbrick from Fairport Convention as the patron of the foundation, and I'm doing a tour for him next year, so his first solo tour I'm organising for him. So I would love to get some recognition for that, if possible, for the foundation. Um, But I love awards. I think they're very important for businesses. I think it opens up a whole new strata of contacts and it's the ultimate networking tool. Wow, that's a very, very strong accolade. When you won your award in... um, 1990. 1990. Uh, 91, sorry. Did you... you, How did it change your business? Overnight, um, I was asked to present at business... Um, events, speak to entrepreneurial businesses, women's networks, um, banks, every every sort of business invited me in and it wasn't paid but it was very enjoyable and I felt that I was able to offer something to help people and encourage them. I think maybe because I was 21 um, there was a sort of I suppose a slight edge there that I wasn't aware of at the time and now I'm 47 I suppose maybe I'm not quite so exciting <laughs> but um, who knows? I, oh, I want fair. to see what the award categories are, yeah. and I would definitely like to enter at least one. Um, it takes a lot of time to enter a business yes, award, yes. a lot of time. And I've got the festival on 21st September, and I believe the entrance is in October for this, the final deadline. Right. So I need to plan it, but still, it was a huge boost to my business, and I got offered a lot of different things. Like, for example, Investors in People yeah. started in 1991, 92, and I was the first female assessor for that. And because of my business award and speaking at various business events, I was asked to be part of the first team of assessors. I assessed Blue Arrow and Yorkshire Bank and a number of other companies around the country, and that gave me a real, really good footing in the consultancy for businesses, for SMEs as well as the large ones. And I then developed skills in appraisal writing and all sorts of induction work with businesses that were outside my original catchment area, which was recruitment agencies. So it sounds as though it really did a, a fantastic job for your business yeah. all those years ago. Let's mm. hope it does another fantastic job um, for, for folk stock. And uh, it's been fantastic meeting you. Uh, every, I wish you every success um, Thank you very in, much. in September, October when it, when it goes ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, wasn't it interesting to speak to Helen, given that she's had time to reflect on having an award? I mean, she got that award 20 90, years ago. 91, you know, Absolutely. it's amazing. So she is actually somebody who's had a chance to reflect. And interesting then that she's, she's actually come back to the awards because she sort of remembers all the advantages uh, of winning she was, one. She was fascinating and, and, I mean, a real serial entrepreneur that, um, you know, clearly loved awards. Um, I loved her statement of um, strata of contacts that uh, she <laughs> developed as a result of, of winning but you know it sounded as though the, the uh, you know the award was still working for her mm. 20 years later mm. so you know it, there's clearly something in awards uh, we know that we wouldn't be running a, a program all about awards but there's no doubt about the fact that there were people at that event that were um, hadn't entered awards before there were people there that were just networking there were people there that had, had never won but were still hopeful that they would um, and our next clip is actually from 
from two of those um, uh, people that were at the awards. I'm here at the Archant Hearts and Cambridge Hertfordshire Business Awards 2013 with Julian Everts of Julian Everts Associates. Um, Julian, tell us about um, your business. Well, uh, basically Julian Everts Associates are um, business development consultants uh, covering all areas. We specialise more in the building and construction industry uh, where we uh, get involved with small SMEs primarily. Yeah. Uh, and, and build them in, put it, put something into their business which they don't have the time to do. Uh, and that's a, my, my area of expertise is more customer relationship management, um, where I build up their client bases for them and keep in touch with them work for, using various um, CRM programs which we have. So you're at the uh, Hertfordshire Business Awards Today, are you hoping to enter the awards? What's your, what are your plans? No, I'm here really just to network and meet other business people in, in, in Hertfordshire and uh, hopefully derive some benefit from, from meeting other, other businesses. Other business. So business it's really people. a networking opportunity. Do you envisage that you might enter awards in the future? Is it something that you think is valuable to companies? I think it's extremely valuable, yes. And yeah, I, uh, I can't predict when I might be there, <laughs> but uh, certainly, yes, it, it would certainly be a, a something to consider, yeah. I'm now with Chantelle Eastwell, who is one of the directors of the Salon Group. Now, I understand, Chantelle, that you entered last year. So what happened last year at the uh, Business Awards? Um, we didn't win. <laughs> now, I understand um, you came close to winning. We were, yes, we were runners-up, and um, we just thought it was a, a great thing to do, a great thing to be part of, and especially for our teams that work so hard, and um, we thought we'd try it again. So, so what have you done this year that you think is going to make um, the difference? Just more, really, of what we, we did in previous years. Um, we've um, sort of upped our game a little bit with certain areas that we weren't very um, good in. Um, and, um, yeah, we think this year we'd have a mighty good chance. And you mentioned the importance of awards to the internal um, yeah. the staff and the, and the morale. Um. Absolutely, because it's just not the people that come and collect the awards, it's the whole of the teams, um, from our youngsters to our stylists to our trainers. Um, and we put a lot of effort into training our young people and um, they give a lot back and uh, we enjoy what we do. And, so. and what about for the Salon Group as a whole in terms of attracting new business? Do you think awards help that? We don't actually need the award for attracting new business, I don't think. It sounds a little bit big-headed, but um, we are quite well known and um, one of the reasons, again, for entering the business awards is the fact that we are busy salons and in today's climate, um, we feel very fortunate, you know, but I'm not turning business away. <laughs> it would be great. Yeah. And so, yeah. So it's a combination. There's Absolutely. There's a few things all around. Yeah. And what about the networking opportunity? One of the guys I was just talking to isn't even entering awards. He's mm. just here for the networking opportunity. Does that feature for you? Um, it's great, yes. I mean, last year when we came, we actually knew quite a few people and we didn't realise they were entering as well, clients of ours, and, or we were clients of other people. Mm. And so, yeah, it's good. And it does help networking. Absolutely so helps. The, the, the whole business community. Certainly, yeah. Well, we wish you every success. Thank you very much, Chantelle Eastwell of the Salon Group. Thank you very much. So that was Chantal Eastwell and Julian Everts, both there, both doing quite different things. And, uh, and let's wish them both success in the future. Um, but what is it really all about? Are awards worth the effort that the companies put in? Um, and what is the return on investments for SMEs? I met up with Sarah Scott, the manager of the Hearts Business Awards, and talked to her about the history of the awards, the growth, which has been massive, that they've seen over the, the 17, 18 odd years that they've been running and the benefits for both the businesses that enter and, of course, for the Archant Media Group, who are the organisers of the whole event. So here we have Sarah Scott, the manager of Hearts Business Awards. They're actually now in their 17th year, so they're very, very well established. Um, the awards began life as the North Hertfordshire Business Awards in 1996, um, and they soon outgrew that title um, to become Hertfordshire Wide. So we started covering the awards in our Comet newspaper series, which covers North Hertfordshire, and then broadened it to include our well in Hatfield Times titles, Heart, Hearts Advertiser, which covers St Albans, um, and various other, lo other locations. So 
yeah, it soon outgrew its its small name to begin with, um, to become Hertfordshire wide and cover a lot more areas. And why do newspapers and and magazines run awards? Um, First and foremost, really, it's to celebrate what's going on in our local communities from a business perspective. Um, Certainly, it it helps Archant to keep our brand names at the forefront of local business, but it's it's more about hearing the stories that are are taking place, giving something back to the businesses that perhaps advertise with us. Um, To enter the awards, it's free, um, and we promote the businesses that enter and become shortlisted through our newspaper titles. So there's quite a lot in it for businesses in terms of uh, reason to enter. But what would you say are the sort of key three or five reasons why a business should be encouraged to enter into the awards? Um, First and foremost, I would say it's free to enter. I'll repeat that. It's free to (laughs) enter. Um, And it's it's a... really cost-effective way of marketing your business. Um, Like I've said, we profile the finalists and winners across the newspaper titles. We also um, profile them digitally through our database um, of over 10,000 businesses. So really, um, from a marketing point of view and a PR point of view, it's it's a fantastic brand awareness opportunity. Um, And on top of that, you get to network with our sponsors who are leading businesses within the area. Um, You get to network with other like minded businesses that have entered the awards themselves so um, from that perspective it's it's just a really good opportunity to get your business name out there. Is there any expectation to advertise in order to um, do well in the awards? Absolutely not. Um, A lot of the businesses that do enter the Business Awards actually don't advertise within our newspaper titles. So there's a real mix of businesses that do enter um, with a Hertfordshire-wide Business Awards. Um, We have areas where our newspaper titles don't hit, um, and we still get businesses that enter from those areas. So Watford, for for one, we don't have a newspaper title in that area, but our, our digital database certainly hits that far. Um, so there's, you know, there's a real cross section of businesses that do come along to the awards. As, as uh, you've got quite a variety of categories in mm-hmm. the awards, how many categories are there? And um, do people, do you encourage people to enter across categories? Absolutely, we've got fourteen categories in total. Um, Twelve of those are core categories, um, which can be entered through um, downloading a pack on the website. And we also have um, our judges award, which has a ten thousand uh, pounds prize worth of advertising so it's ten thousand pounds worth of advertising courtesy of Archant Um, and we also have the company of the year which is chosen from the winner of winners Um, the categories range from small business um, through to large business and then training and development HR excellence customer service so there really is something for everybody um, to enter and you can enter up to three categories as well so um, you know the more chance you the more times you enter sorry the more chances you have of obviously getting through to the shortlisted stages in your experience what because it does, it seems a no brainer but it's clearly not as easy as that mm. um, and it does take time to enter awards what do you think is the key reason why people don't enter the awards i think it is a daunting prospect um, you have to collate an amount of uh, information to put into your entry. However, if you're collecting that information throughout the year, um, you've actually probably got the information to hand and you don't actually realise it. We have networking events that we run throughout the year in the run-up to entry deadline um, where businesses can come along and learn about the entry process and actually see that it's not such a daunting task. Um, Each entry, um, sorry, each category has between three and five criterion And with that criterion, you can put supporting information. Now, supporting information can be anything from your marketing material, your facts, your figures, basically proof what you're saying in your entry is true and accurate. But it it gives the judges a really rounded view of your business during the shortlisting period. The actual wordage that you need to write is probably a maximum of 500 words per criterion, which actually, once you get writing about your business, isn't that much, and you'll find that you actually want more words if you could have them. Um, but we have to draw the line somewhere, otherwise the entries would be uh, far too long. And imagine judges poring over them for weeks and weeks and weeks of time yeah, if they're too long. Exactly, and they really do have a, a, a small window of opportunity to get through the shortlisting period. It's a very quick ter- you know, turnaround because they then go out and visit the businesses um, that have been shortlisted. So you get the opportunity then to meet the judges and explain more about your business um, and really show them that what you've been, you know, you've put into your nomination is is accurate and and true. What do you think um, 
is the, the biggest error that companies um, do, apart from not entering in the first place. Yeah. When you see the entr entries, what do you think that they, they do mostly wrong? I think reading the criteria thoroughly and then going back and reading it again because it's very easy once you're you do start writing about your business because you're passionate about it you can actually start to move away from what the criteria is actually asking you um, so I would say just go back and read and reread the criteria to make sure that you're actually sticking to the point that you're trying to answer and use the opportunity to put the supporting information in because it really does help the judges to, to see your business in a, a well-rounded way. Um, the supporting information, you know, makes a 3D image of your business, if you like, for the judges. Um, so, you know, the two mistakes I would say is one, not reading the criteria properly and not using the opportunity to, to put in that additional information. Do you do the do the criteria change? Do the categories change year on year? We've 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 kind of done well with the categories in that we've got some some really solid categories now. Um, we had one change this year, which was um, the training and development and recruitment categories became one and became HR excellence um, because they fit well together. So um, occasionally there are changes, not very often. The, the categories do tend to stay the same. And in your experience, what's the, what's the most um, bizarre company that's entered? Oh, I don't know about bizarre, really, but we've, I mean, we've had luxury cat hotels, um, which <laughs> oh, are like fabulous. My, yeah, <laughs> and it's absolutely wonderful, and um, my cat would love to go there, I'm sure. Um, right through to, you know, businesses that, um, you're, you know, you're more run-of-the-mill businesses, so um, LV in, in Hitchin, for example, so some real big company names through to the smaller businesses. We've had a birthing pool um, lady that wow. entered one of our other awards. It wasn't the Hertfordshire Awards, but, you know, real cross-section So, of I mean, you, it can be really small business, micro business. Absolutely. Um, the small business category, although the, the um, criteria says up to two million, we have um, one-man bands enter. Um, really? Yeah, you know, new business, for example, um, is businesses that have started within 18 months. So it's actually a long, you know, a long period. So a lot of businesses that have started up recently could actually fall into that, right. that criteria and, and certainly the new business category isn't so focused on profit, it's focused on the sustainability of that business model and, and how well it will do. There are lots of awards out there, why are the Archant Awards the best ones to enter? <laughs> Um, I'll, be, I'll be quite honest and I'd say um, enter as many awards as you can, yes our awards are the best, of course <laughs> I would say that. Um, they are very well established and you know we must be doing something right if our sponsors keep returning um, and we've, we have seen the entries grow year on year. Um, I wouldn't say any other awards are bad, they're not. I would say enter as many awards as you can because it helps your business. Um, it's a fantastic way of profiling your business internally just by going through the entry process. Um, and if it means that you're getting more promotion from your business by entering our awards and other awards that are in the region, um, then I'd say go for it. Now, you just mentioned it there that um, you know there's um, entry points, there's different sizes of company that can enter, enter as many as you possibly can. It's a time-consuming mm. operation, isn't it? How do you judge the time allocated to the, you know, the potential benefit? What's the return on investment? It's, I mean, again, it's profiling for your business. Um, if you actually, I've, I've worked with companies um, through the awards that you, they enter year on year and they basically decide what category they're going to be entering the following year and then they work towards it. So they collate the information as they go. Um, every business should start with a business plan. So you, there's one bit of the information that you already should have um, in place. Um, and the other bits of information you can pull together as you're going, going through, through the year. The entry process for the Hertfordshire Business Awards, we launch in June, and the entry deadline isn't until the 6th of October. So you do have a fair amount of time to actually start pulling the information together for the awards. OK, so let's just talk about that timetable. Mm -hmm. um, we're sort of in the middle to middle of August, early August, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, there's still plenty of time then. What, mm -hmm. What's the process? What do small businesses um, have to do in order to enter the awards now? It's a very simple process. Um, the website address is www.heartsbusinessawards.co.uk. Um, you simply go online, download your entry pack from the website. It's a Word document that you can save to your desktop. 
um, and then start filling out the criteria. Um, what I would suggest is that you fill it out, go back and read it again a week later or get a second pair of eyes to look at it for you. And um, There will be things that you will want to change. Um, and again, use the, use the opportunity to put the supporting information in. Um, and then it's a case of uh, sending it through to myself. Um, it is a hard copy, so you would need to post it in, mainly because at deadline time my email box will crash if everybody <laughs> sends them all at the same time. Um, so it's a case of popping it in the post sending it to you or dropping it off at the office if you if you are local to us in Stevenage. Um, and then basically we go through the shortlisting period beginning of October and then the shortlisted finalists are announced and the judges make their appointments to come and see the shortlist, shortlisted um, finalists. How many, how many are on each shortlist? We shortlist to five per category. Right. So okay. the competition is stiff. And how many entries per, per category? I guess it varies, but on average... It does vary. I mean, last year, looking at the entry packs that we had last year, we had over 600 entry packs downloaded. Wow. Um, that's not to say they all turned into hard entries, but that was the packs that were downloaded from the website. Certain categories, and this is the million-dollar question, which are the ones that are, are more well-entered? Um, they do vary. Uh, new business, for, certainly for the last couple of years, um, new business and small business have been extremely well-entered, um, I think just because of the nature of you know the recession and people starting up their own business. Um, and larger businesses, there tend to be fewer larger businesses in, in Hertfordshire, so that's not as well ed- entered as new business or small business. But they're all very well entered categories, um, well established as the awards are, really. And then, so you let's say we've got shortlisted, we then are, are visited by a couple of judges, mm-hmm. um, and then, then what happens? Then what happens... And when the, actually, before I go on to that, mm-hmm. when the judge comes to see you, what are they expecting to see? The judges work from an, um, two different sets of criteria. So you would have the criteria that you filled out for your nomination, um, and then the judges have a second set of criteria that basically just uh, delves a little bit deeper, really, into your business. Um, so they will ask you questions. Um, it's really an opportunity for you to show your business off to the judges, um, you know, and show them how well you're doing. Um, and, and, like I say, give them a rounded view of, of your business um, so that they can make a, an informed decision on who the winner should be. And the winners are announced at a, a gala dinner? It, absolutely. Uh, the 28th of November, we um, take over the big marquee and the barns up at Nebworth House. Oh, lovely. Um, for a black tie gala dinner. Um, now, if I'm shortlisted, do I then have to buy a table at that dinner? No, you don't have to buy a table. Um, it is purchase tickets, um, but you can buy one ticket or you can buy ten tickets. Okay. Um, the tickets, um, we go to our finalists first so that they can make sure they get the allocation that they want. Yes. Um, and then they go on general sale to other businesses that want to come along and just be a part of the evening and network. And that sounds like a fantastic evening, and it's mm. all kept very secret. Um, it and is. then I know that there's quite a lot of publicity after that event for the awards in the papers. Absolutely. We, um, obviously, we announced the finalists in paper um, with a big supplement before the awards. Um, and then the post-event feature goes across our core Hertfordshire titles again afterwards. We also have Hertfordshire Life, which is one of our magazine titles that's covering the event as well. So there's lots of promotion to be had for the winners and the finalists as well. And then, of, of course, because those companies can then use those, uh, those links, those logos, those winner awards Absolutely. on their own websites and in their own marketing material. Absolutely. We, um, we will uh, furnish them with a finalist and a winner's logo um, and then we encourage them to, to use it as much as they can um, and shout about the fact that they're award winners um, because it does really create a unique selling point for their businesses. So um, we also go back and revisit our finalists and winners the following year just to find out how they're getting on. Um, so the, the, the promotion doesn't just stop after the awards are finished, it actually continues into the following year as well and each business will go on to the, uh, the role of honour which then goes up on the website. Fantastic. That's, it's really interesting. It sounds like a great evening. I'm not quite sure why I've never been along, so I must have to, I have to look at those awards uh, entry forms. Thank you very, very much, Sarah no, thank Scott. Thank you. Well, no doubt, it's uh, you can see that it's working for Archant, and we we, we would all love an award. Let's let's face it, to to put on our websites or having a business card, but we did have a think about how easy it would be to fill in the forms. Trevor Meriden spoke by telephone to Isabel Moritz, and she runs a company called Moritz Bid Support Limited. Her company helps clients win tenders and awards. Trevor started by asking her whether she ever dissuades clients from entering awards that they're unlikely to win. Absolutely I do. I'll give them quite a tough 
interview beforehand to ask them why they think they could win, not going into an award just for the sake of going into it. It requires quite a lot of concentration and, well, time really, to make sure that your award is the best it can be. But if you haven't got the collateral, if you like, if you haven't got uh, something special that you've done, something that will lift you above the others, mm. then there really isn't a lot of point in going in for it. So does that mean that you're really, you, you need to look at what, what the award is asking for, what the criteria are? I think that um, they usually give some guidance on the criteria, and then you have to get inside the mind of whoever sets the question, or the body that sets the question, and look at them and do some research on them. What, are, what do they want to achieve with this award? And uh, what's behind the question that they've asked, the questions or the set of questions, or just putting the award up. So I think that if you don't fully understand what it is they're trying to get to with this award, they need to feel good about awarding it to you. So we need to know their motivations, really. Yeah. It's, in your experience, um, do you find then that that the, some clients are are entering awards for probably the wrong reasons? I think the, the reasons are probably their own, which are usually very good ones to raise their profile. That's the reason that somebody would go in for an award, to be able to claim or put on their website or even put the logo on their uh, stationery, anything like that. Um, the, their motivation is probably good. But what they haven't thought of is the huge competition there are now in the wars. Okay. And that, that, would, that would be one of the things I'd be asking them. Okay. What, in your estimation, what makes a really good award entry? I think that something a bit quirky and that is supported by very good business practice and a real feel that the person is very competent and knows exactly what they're doing. Mm. That's the feel that needs to come through in your award entry mm. is that you are extremely capable and in your sphere you're the top. Yeah. And do you think that, you know, uh, you know uh, assuming that uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, the entry that goes in is as good as it can be. Do you think it's then in the lap of the gods? You know, the vagary of the the particular judging panel. Um, you know, it, it's it, is it a bit of a lottery? I suppose I'm saying. I don't think it's a lottery. I really think that the judges, in my experience, the judges weigh up very carefully who they're going to award, and they actually you often have quite a few arguments between each other about it. Um, but. I think that I think it's a genuine judgment. I don't think it's a lottery, and I don't think that there's favouritism this way or that shown. I think that it's the quality of your submission, the quality of your response to the question, and whatever it is that makes you stand out from um, the the crowd, because it is a crowd nowadays going into. The well, well, that 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 that's right. It is a crowd, and, and uh, but if you rise above the crowd and your and your client wins uh, an, an, an award, um, what sort of difference in, in in your mind can that make to a to a business? Well, I know from personal experience that people have said that they it, where they've looked on, for instance, they've searched on the web and what they see is an award-winning company. Mm. They have said that's the reason they've gone for that company. Because okay. when everyone's saying the same thing and you're an award-winning company, so why did you choose an award? Because you're better than the rest and that's the one you'll choose. So it does make a difference up to the bottom line. Yeah. So it's a... a it's it's a very happy symbol, if you like, for a, a, a business. Um, you know, you could spend hours and hours researching a business, but it's just one of those little indicators that is is almost a shorthand for I'm dealing with with someone good here. That's right, and not only winning an award. If you're finalist, you can put that on your um, on the thing. So finalist in the such and such award. Again, if you're there aren't that many people in your sphere of business or the fact that 
you made finalists is, is really um, not as good, but it's not far off if you made finalists. So even if you don't win, you can still extract the maximum from it. And interestingly, we, we generally say to our guests, hey, you want to give your website details, your telephone number. And Isabel made a point of saying to Trevor, please do not give out my website address because I'm so snowed under with work until January. So that tells us something. Yeah, she's a fantastic, um, fantastic lady, fantastic operator. And I know that she helped um, somebody that I know well with uh, an awards entry one year. Um, she'd been entering the awards, never won. Isabel helped her and she actually won two awards the year that Isabel helped her. So I'm not surprised she's snowed under. Mm -hmm. Um, However, uh, the next clip is very interesting um, because obviously these awards have sponsors and one of the main sponsors of um, the medium-sized business uh, award this year is the Richmond House Group and they've been involved in the awards on and off for a number of years. I asked their MD Paul Beasley when and uh, why they'd originally got involved. We originally got involved in the North Hearts Business Awards as they were then back 15, 16 years ago um, as uh, one of the sponsors. Um, We had a little break as uh, one tends to do with the marketing mix, changing around a bit, but we came back to the Hertfordshire Business Awards as they are now uh, four years ago. Um, We sponsored various categories in those four years. the reason for getting involved, uh, it's obviously a marketing exercise. It raises a brand and the pro- profile of RHG locally. Um, but we've also been very keen to support local business, um, particularly in Stevenage. Stevenage is a, a, a very good hub for business. There's some good businesses here, both large, medium and small. Um, and we do actively get involved in the local business community, trying to promote um, a better environment for business and so we feel that the Hertfordshire Business Awards are a quality awards program um, that can help showcase the quality of those businesses in and around Hertfordshire. And over the many years that you've been involved, would you, have you actually got clients as a result, do you think, of the awards? Have some of the winners decided to come and actually work with you? Um, I, I don't know as I could say that directly, but certainly we've had a number of clients enter and, uh, and actually win. Um, and so, uh, yes, I've had to uh, suspend my judging at certain times <laughs> because of a uh, conflict of interest. Oh, well, uh, that's but, interesting. But that was, that's very nice. It's nice to see, see clients doing well. So, yes, yeah, so it's, it's something you can't measure as directly as that, but uh, there's no doubt in the four years that we've been involved, um, the last four years, our profile uh, around Hertfordshire has grown substantially, and I think the, the awards are, are part and parcel of, of delivering that. Do you actively encourage your clients to enter awards? Yes, very much so. Um, We uh, like to uh, think that our clients are of the right quality and standing to to enter such awards. Uh, We're sponsoring the Medium Business Award this year, which is uh, probably our target market as a company, uh, sort of size company we want to deal with. Um, And so we have a lot of clients that would qualify for that category. So yes, we do actually actively promote it via... Uh, email and uh, and general general meetings. We, we mention it and, and thrust it in front of them and urge them to take part. Now, have have RHG themselves ever entered this award? We haven't, no, because um, so we, we we did originally sponsor in the in the North Hearts Business Awards when they were first launched, um, mm-hmm. and so having sponsored it, um, we felt perhaps it might be inappropriate to enter <laughs> because if we did win, then uh, yeah. people might be a little bit suspicious. Yeah, I can see that. So I'm going to ask you to put your other hat on now because as a key sponsor, you're also a judge. Yes. So how does the judging work? Do you get some rigorous uh, sort of criteria or is there a bit of free fall? Do you, do you decide yourselves? How does, how does it work? What are you looking for in terms of the entries? Each of the categories will have um, a presentation format uh, which will consist of three, possibly four uh, different categories for uh, the entrance to write a certain number of words uh, and enclose a couple of pieces of supporting material to support. Um, so that forms a basis of the presentation um, and uh, sometime in October the judges will get together for a couple of days uh, in a darkened room um, <laughs> and we will talk through these presentations. Um, I think in the medium business category last year we had something like 20 wow. uh, presentations to, to go through uh, and there will be at least two judges uh, marking each presentation uh, and normally three. Uh, and uh, those scoring, the scoring system is set out, um, and you get an order 
uh, of merit. Um, uh, that is not the end of the matter because then obviously the judges who have marked uh, those entries will discuss the manner in which they've marked them, why they've marked certain things uh, differently from one of the other judges, uh, if there is a difference in, in the marking system. And um, a final five will be uh, finally agreed uh, to go forward for the, uh, uh, the nomination as on the uh, awards evening itself. Now, you, you mentioned a darkened room because that's <laughs> always how it's described. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's not a darkened room, but is there ever much conflict within the, the closed doors of the judging chamber? Um, there's certainly different approaches and, and, and different viewpoints. I, I don't think it could be classed as conflict. Um, I found it um, a very good learning curve, um, sitting with other business people and seeing how they view a presentation totally differently to... Uh, uh, in the manner I, I have. Um, can, can you give me examples of, of that? Um, uh, specific examples? Just, um, you can, the, sometimes the presentations uh, do vary, and if you get a very good presentation, um, and the enthusiasm of uh, the person who, who's written it comes across very strongly, um, and you, you, you just form a view of that business, and whereas another judge might take a more uh, non-emotional approach, look at the cold, hard facts and figures, uh, the potential for the business, the scalability of the business, as opposed to um, uh, the actual um, enthusiasm within the presentation itself, and come up with a, a, a very different uh, point of view. And which sort of category of judge do you fit into? Are you more emotionally driven, looking for passion and energy? Which is something that we see quite a lot on the Dragon's Den, don't we? Indeed. Where yeah. you know they, they sort of really buy into an individual um, and think, actually, what we can probably do is, is sort of drive the business ourselves, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know the numbers having to be actually bang on. Um, it's, it's about the person rather than the numbers. Which category of judge are you? I, certainly, formally, I, I, I was um, uh, someone who looks at, at, at the person and, and, and the enthusiasm and the structure of the business as a whole. Um, but uh, I think there's something I've learned in the judging process that um, actually you've also got to look at the figures, you've also got to look at, um, uh, say, the scalability, you know, where is it going to be in a year's time? Uh, have they reached their peak? Um, is there a particular threat uh, to the business um, that could undermine it very quickly and very easily? Um, it's very easy to ignore those things when you're, you're getting wrapped up in, in the passion of the idea of the business. So, so those SWOT analysis that, that we've all done over yeah. the years really can come into play. Absolutely. Over the years that you've been a judge, what's, can you think of a particular entry that stood out for, reason, for good reasons or for, for bad reasons at all? Um, I don't know, so I, I'm, I, I should actually... Mention, <laughs> Without mentioning any names, I, I should mention any names, of course. Um, I, I think that there's, uh, there was one from a, a marketing firm, and, and uh, because they were a marketing firm, you'd expect their presentation to be very good, but it was exceptionally good. Um, and it was very, very difficult to get beyond the quality of that presentation to drill down to the actual nitty-gritty of the business, because it really was very impressive. Um, that's one I remember very well. Uh, another one I remember is um, is actually a client of ours who um, uh, has entered, uh, entered for a couple of years running and, and hasn't won, uh, came very close. But again, the quality of the presentation, um, not just in a marketing sense, but the, the thoroughness of it from um, the budgeting, uh, the cash flow forecasting, uh, the three to five year plan, uh, the training program for the staff, um, the way that was structured and mapped out was, was, was head and shoulders above anything else I think I've ever seen in, in yeah. a local awards program. So that was very, very good. Now, I know that, that, um, that there are people out there that actually earn a living by helping people enter awards, mm. because actually we've got a, a, a very nice lady that we've, we've interviewed, who, are, who I know personally, who does a great job and has helped companies win awards. When you're judging, can you, can you see that in, in, a, in an entry? Can you see where a company's actually really got some help in terms of the, the content? Um, no, I hadn't really thought of that before. I, I can't really say that I have, particularly as judging the best medium business, I suppose I wouldn't think that they would uh, employ somebody or appoint somebody to, to, to do that for them. Um, I certainly don't see any evidence in the larger categories that uh, I've also judged uh, over the years because, um, if anything, I've been disappointed with the, uh, the entries of the larger companies That's who should have the resources to, to, to put something of quality together. Um, so, no, I can't say as I've seen evidence of that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, now, that's interesting as well that you said that the larger companies don't 
don't seem to be able to sort of actually impress as much as you think they should. Why do you think that is? Um, I, I'm, I'm obviously guessing here, but I, I suspect the fact that they are larger companies, um, uh, the owners, executives are not getting directly involved in uh, the entry process itself, that's delegated to a lower level, um, and because it is perhaps a, a local business award rather than a national one, perhaps it isn't given the same uh, management and seriousness um, as, as perhaps it would if it was a national competition. Um, but as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing yeah. on that. Yeah. That sounds like a mistake to me, actually. Uh, I think it is. I think it is. I, 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 uh, one of my other hats is, uh, is, is helping to run a local business group, and one of the things we're trying to do is, is uh, communicate, bring closer communications between SME companies and larger companies, um, because I think there's a lot of scope for larger companies to, to do business locally uh, rather than going outside the region. Um, and I think if larger companies were to engage with these type of awards more, um, uh, that communication would naturally happen and they'll get to, to, to source some very good local suppliers that hitherto perhaps they've avoided. So it is, it sounds as though it is really a mistake. Now, just on a final point, Paul, um, if you had one tip that you could give the, uh, the entrance to this year's um, business awards, what would it be? Um, if I could be cheeky and say two, the, the, the most obvious one that everybody misses is to actually read the entry criteria. And um, uh, there will be three or four different categories and, 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 and different areas that uh, uh, the entrants need to um, to look at and, and, and explain. Make sure that you do that um, and, and keep it relevant to, to what is required because that is a, a very fundamental mistake that is, is often made. Um, and yes, and the second one is to, to remember that we, um, over the course of two days, will probably be reading, I don't know, maybe 50 presentations. Um, and um, you know, if they're interesting, that's great. If, if there's a bit of fun in there, that's great. Uh, it doesn't need to be overly serious. It can be a, a fun business, business entering business awards. Just make it interesting and different if you can. That sounds like a very, very good tip. Thank you very, very much, Paul Beasley, Managing Director of Richmond House Group, Stevenage. So how many tips did you get there? My goodness, that was absolutely full of tips. And um, any companies that are thinking about entering would, would be well to, to replay that, uh, that interview. What we're going to talk about next, we're going to have a look at, at what seems like a local award and how a local award can actually give you many other benefits. If you want to get in touch with the business on Radio Verulam, phone us on 01727 839 926 or email thebusiness at radioverulam.com. So we've got uh, lots of inside tips there. That's fantastic from Paul Beasley. Um, and we were looking at local awards. But what we do know is that local awards can have far reaching effects uh, for business, particularly if their intention is to branch out into uh, not only a wider area, but even into foreign markets. And in this sense, a local award is never really just local. Roma Bomick had the good fortune to speak to John Christopher of the Enterprise Europe network. She got straight to the point. If if I say awards to you, what does that mean in the context of Enterprise Europe? It sort of means two things. One is awards as in awards and trophies and, and those things, but also awards in the sense of oftentimes financial awards and technology awards, which are one of the areas I've, I've worked quite a bit in. So as a small business, I'm thinking about how I can move my business forward. Why would I want to look at awards? and what? Give me some examples of awards and how they make a difference. I think if people are, are sort of in a competitive marketplace, whether national or international, what is it that would take you to, if you don't know a company or a customer and you're looking around or bumping into someone or you're trying as a company to sell yourself into a situation, if you can show, for example, that you've got a few perhaps professional awards, accreditations, it might be an ISO 9000 award or, or things of that nature. So that might help differentiate you from your competitors. Equally well, um, different local awards, um, international export awards or things like that. that uh, I'm thinking of Ether NDA, a local company in Harperton, have just won a Chamber of Commerce award. And they're working over 30 countries, I think almost 40. And that's a really good thing for them to you know, post on their website and say, look, we've been independently assessed, we're, we're doing okay, like to do better, like anybody, 
but it's a little bit of a, of, of a flag, and because it's not of their own making, there's some value to it. So how do I know that I'm, if you like, ready to, or, or I'm in the right state in terms of my business to apply for an award? I would say to people, look very much at, at, at the rules and the detail as well as the uh, between the lines of what it's asking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think most uh, awards will have various criteria. So mm-hmm. it could be headcount, mm-hmm. it could be got to be a new company within the last two years or whatever their particular criteria might be. So I'd look closely at that and speak to people that would be knowledgeable about it. Uh, perhaps past entrants or, or award winners, right. if you can. So make sure that you're chasing something which is relevant to you. There's no point in spending management time doing something, whatever size of company, that isn't going to result in some yeah. progress forward. Yeah. And how would I know where to look to find out what kinds of awards? And I guess you're talking about funds as well, really, aren't uh, you? Uh, yes. I mean, there, there's, there's uh, you could almost describe it to two categories one which is sort of, sort of an award and accolade and another word which is an award in terms of finance and, and probably some in between as mm-hmm. well talk seriously to the people if it's a chamber of commerce award a half a chamber of commerce award you know get to grips with the people have a serious conversation with them and understand what that's about and and see whether or not you think that will help your business or indeed the eyes of your customers so in the context of finding out more our listeners could probably access some information that you post on your organisation's uh, website. Uh, yes. Um, for some time I've been uh, knocking out a document, it's now t- uh, 10 pages, but fairly concise on sources of finance. And in there are, are, are a variety of different uh, awards as well, um, generally related to funding, such as Brian mm-hmm. Mercer Award for, from, from London and other, other odd um, things, the Smart Awards. Um, research awards against so, so we're talking you know financial matters mm-hmm. um, so that source is a finance document can be downloaded off the Enterprise Europe website um, which is all the W's enterpriseeuropeeast.org.uk uh, that's enterpriseeuropeeast.org.uk and if you go to um, uh, the links page and uh, business finance is a, is a top section mm-hmm. you'll find it there in about the fourth thing down on the on the page if we're talking about awards in terms of um, the competitions and other things, a lot of these things I know about, so if people want to get in touch with, with me or talk to Hertfordshire LEP, for example, the Local Enterprise Partnership, or indeed the Chamber of Commerce, um, happy to signpost people. Mm-hmm. We actually work very closely with UK Trade and Investment, and it's probably worth mentioning those guys, because they're, they're there very much to help companies into export markets. Um, Queen's Award for Industry is, is very much one of the things that they... Um, sorry for export is very much one of the things that they um, uh, support and typically that's an annual thing and we'll end up in a sort of big event in London and such like which again gives opportunity to the press and the media to pick up your story yes. uh, and, and do things so awards can be good because they're things that other people can pick up and promote on your behalf You're listening to The Business on Radio Verulam with the voice of the local business community on 92.6 FM and on RadioVerulam.com. Now we're nearly at the end of the show, which has always uh, rushed along and slipped past so quickly. Um, Claire, what's stuck in your mind? Um, There's been lots and lots of hot tips. Um, There's plenty of stuff there to drive your business forward. What do you think? I think at least three people said about reading what is actually on the form, you know, are you suitable for for that award? So as as the saying goes, you know, when all else fails, read the instructions. But quite quite a number of them <laughs> said, look, for goodness sake, make sure you read the, the form first. It's, it's ironic, isn't it? Because probably from the age of about um, you know, every, six, when you first do your first exams, your teachers, your parents, everybody is saying, read the question, read the question. And then we suddenly you know, b- start running businesses and you know, multi-million, well, not, not mine, but many big businesses, and then actually forget some basic principles. So I think it's a really good point. Um, I think for me as well, a lot of people think that there's so much time and effort going into the business awards um, that is it worth it? You know, is the real return on investment but actually it's also a really good business exercise to to really understand your business inside out understand what you're good at understand what you're not so good at really nail your business plan uh, your marketing plans and you know what you're going to be doing next all of those are really really valuable tools um, for, for developing your business at the same time as entering awards and, and hopefully winning 
Um, so we need to finish now. As always, we've just got a few notices of what's coming up in West Hearts. Um, don't forget, of course, to have a look at the Hearts, um, Archant Hearts Awards entry uh, for times and web addresses, etc. Um, we've also got coming up on the 23rd of October the Hearts B2B Live Exhibition at the Fielder Centre, Hatfield. So have a look at that. Um, and we've got a few other networking events, Claire, I understand. Monday the 12th of August, Link for Coffee, it's called, and it's at Broxbourne Paradise Wildlife Park. <laughs> Sounds quite interesting, so I always have a look at the, the wildlife park afterwards. And it's a morning event, 9.30 till 11.30. And we've also got this uh, 24-7 one. Yes, that's in Watford. That's a breakfast one. That's nine, uh, sorry, seven till nine at the Mercure Hotel Watford. That's 24-7, sorry, yeah, 24-7 business networking. And um, our old favourite, the Business Buzz St Albans on August the 15th. That's at the Waterend Barn St Albans. All of these networking events can be found at www.findnetworkingevents.com. So that's just about the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us um, on the website, on Twitter, or just give us a call. You've been listening to The Business on Radio Verulam. If there's anything in the show you want to talk to us about, phone us on 01727 839 926 or email thebusiness at radioverulam.com.